So now we're going to conclude our look at frog gastrulation by entitling this next flowchart Frog Gastrulation 3. And here we're just going to finish up the sequence of events and simply just summarize everything that has resulted from the complex and complicated uh, structure of events that we saw in the previous video. Now these sequence of events, again, I'd like to reiterate, are summarized in figure 47.10 and the subtitles and the um, captions associated with figure 47.10 are really useful because it talks you through the entire process very nicely. So overall, what we're going to notice at the late gastrulation stage, basically at the end of everything that we covered in the sequence of events in the previous video, what we're going to see is an ectoderm. There will be an ectoderm, I sort of spoke uh, out of context, but now we actually do have an ectoderm, um, and that's going to be as a result of the following. The ectoderm forms as a result of remaining cells that are spread out on the surface. Remaining cells, and this is what I meant by those surface cells, remaining cells spread out on surface. So any of the cells that don't go inward, that don't fold, that don't involve, are not involved in involution or in invagination or indentation, whatever it may be, those remaining cells are going to give rise to the ectoderm on the surface of this developing embryo, on the surface of this gastrula now, since we're almost completely done with gastrulation. Um, the endoderm is another structure that we need to cover and remind ourselves. The endoderm forms as the innermost layer as a point of sort of repetition, forms as the innermost layer that's not news to anyone. In addition, we have the mesoderm that has formed. The mesoderm has formed as well, and this is between the endo and ectoderm. Forms between the endo plus ecto. So we're explicitly mentioning every single uh, layer that we see. And then also we will talk about, and we talked about the blastopore, I should say, the blastopore. Um, that structure was circling, right? It was growing as a circle. And what we're going to state is that once it's meeting up with the other end, where it's not going to actually be fully gone um, in terms of meeting with the other end and then sort of disappearing as no longer being an opening. What's going to happen is it's not going to turn into one smooth circle tube structure, let's say. It's going to be um, a structure that's not fully gone, I should say, yet. And here what we mean by this is if you look at the figure, it's much easier to visualize this than just by the words. But what I'm going to state is that it surrounds what is known as a plug of yolk-filled cells. And there's not much I can do to sort of explain what that means besides tell you to look at the figure to really understand what this plug of yolk-filled cells is that surrounds the blastopore at the stage of late gastrulation. So now that covers our look at frog gastrulation. I just want to mention that overall what you should do is take a look at figure 47.10, compare it to figure 47.8. This is our sea urchin gastrulation. This is our frog gastrulation, both involving the sequence of events. Um, and so what we're going to sort of summarize about both of this is that they involve different events, both gastrulation processes, but the thing that's sort of the same about them, different events except for the fact that their final result is the same. And that final result in both of them is three germ layers as a result of going from a blastula to a gastrula. And that's something to take note when you compare and contrast those two figures. That covers frog gastrulation. We're going to look at one more organism uh, in the next video. That's chick gastrulation.